expected that officials at all levels must conduct themselves in an exemplary fashion, take the lead in improving their conduct, and keep their promises. The party must practice frugality in everything it does, and oppose waste, extravagance, and hedonism. It should embrace the fine Chinese tradition of thrift and hard work, as well as have pride in practicing economy and shame in causing waste, so that these values will have an environment in which they can flourish. Thrift is a traditional virtue of the Chinese nation. It represents the nation's determination to make progress and to strive forever onward. A love of peace and a unity has been the basic constituents of China's culture of harmony since ancient times. Confucius said, "A man of virtue aims at harmony and not uniformity. An ignoble man aims at uniformity and not harmony." He stressed the importance of harmony and unity in interpersonal relations. A value which underpins the cohesion of the Chinese nation. Integrity and credibility are the essence of the Chinese nation's moral culture. The word credibility appears 38 times in the Analects of Confucius. A part of the traditional moral framework, credibility is the basis of conducting and cultivating oneself. Without credibility, it is said that a person cannot stand on his own feet, a business cannot grow, a city cannot prosper, and a society cannot maintain stability. A society of credibility is one of the important signs of a modernized China. This is Gong Chuanzhen. She's 91 years old. She has been a party member for more than 60 years. She's the widow of Gan Zuchang, a general who took part in the founding of the People's Republic of China, and she serves as a community worker in Lianhua County, Jiangxi Province. She has given up the good living conditions of a big city to return to the countryside. Gong Chuanzhen has always cherished the traditions of the revolutionary generation, and now works to promote them among youth. Gong has donated to disaster relief organizations on multiple occasions, and financially assists poor students and families. She has also taken on greater responsibilities, such as establishing volunteer service teams, introducing new mechanisms for community management, and promoting education in the old revolutionary base areas, winning great respect from others and inspiring them to do the same. Gong is truly living up to the mission and the beliefs of the party. Seeing her here, I'm quite touched. She and General Gan Zuchang went through hard times, but today she still maintains the spirit of hard work and a plain living. For this, she was chosen to be a national model for morality, and is present at this meeting. I feel gratified. We must carry forward the spirit of hard work and a plain living, generation after generation. We should pay tribute to this remarkable woman.
models for morality are important for establishing socialist ethics, fostering truth, kindness, and beauty, spreading positive energy, inspiring a virtuous character in people, and fostering role models will create strong intellectual and ethical support for realizing the Chinese dream of national rejuvenation. The most beautiful mother, Wu Jiping, a woman who caught a little girl falling from a building in Hangzhou. The most beautiful grandma, Cheng Xianmei, an elderly, destitute woman in Foshan, Guangdong Province, who saved a two-year-old girl out from underneath a car. The most beautiful teacher, Zhang Li Li, a teacher born in the 1980s, who lost her legs after saving her students. The most beautiful driver, Wu Bing, who saved all the passengers on his bus after receiving fatal wounds by using his last vestiges of strength to slow down and stop the bus. The most beautiful father, Wang Xiaorong. The most beautiful rural teacher, Ma Fuxing. The most beautiful rural doctor, Zhou Yuehua. The most beautiful food washing worker, Liu Li. The list of the most beautifuls goes on and on. Like dandelions whose seeds can be carried miles away to grow in new locations, the seeds of virtue can also spread far and wide and take root wherever they are. Every society needs moral figures. These people are good examples to the general public. Such figures may be different during different periods, and there are many examples in history. The most beautiful are the embodiment of the morality of our time, and their exemplary deeds can influence people in a positive way. Nationwide, ethical and moral education helps people engender goodness, make the right moral judgments, and increase their sense of moral responsibility. In this way, people come to advocate and follow ethical practices. Just as a country cannot prosper without virtue, a person likewise cannot succeed without virtue. Chinese culture. Rich with traditional virtues, will always shine in the Chinese people's sense of belonging. At the end of the 1970s, the Chicago Tribune reporter Timothy McNulty and seven other American journalists became the first China-based foreign journalists in the wake of the founding of the People's Republic of China. Three decades later, when he visited Beijing again, he noted with the keen eye of a reporter that it had taken the United States one to two hundred years to become modernized. But in only 30 years, China had accomplished such amazing change. The biggest and most profound changes have occurred in the lives of ordinary Chinese people. This is an open, confident, self-reliant, and innovative nation. In the course of reform and opening up. The first village practicing the household contract responsibility system with a remuneration linked to output. The first farmer cooperative. The first private business owner. The first factory to practice the director responsibility system. The first joint stock company. The first publicly listed company. The first joint stock commercial bank. All these firsts are landmarks in the course of reform.
The Shenzhen Special Economic Zone is known as the eldest son of China's reform. Its most endearing trait is reform and innovation. And over the more than three decades since its formation, remarkable results have been achieved in reform and opening up there. With an average annual GDP growth rate of 25.8%, Shenzhen has transitioned from being a small fishing village with a population of 30,000 to a modern, cosmopolitan city home to more than 14 million. It has highly developed industry, transportation, infrastructure and a good environment and is a showcase for the extraordinary vigor and a promising future of socialism with Chinese characteristics. Looking back into the past and forward into the future, we can proudly say that the spirit of reform and innovation is what has driven the emancipation of people's minds, the development of productive forces, and the increase of vitality throughout society. It is also an important strategy for keeping up with the times while advancing the cause of the party and the people. Be bold, think big, and dare to be the first. This is a fitting description of the spirit to forge ahead and innovate. It is what helps us improve our capacity for innovation and building an innovative country. The Chinese spirit encompasses the national spirit and the spirit of the times. The core socialist values stand at the forefront of the Chinese spirit and are the mainstream values of today's society. Prosperity, democracy, civility, harmony, freedom, equality, justice, rule of law, patriotism, dedication, integrity, and friendship. Core values are the cell of cultural soft power and are key in building such power within China. Facts of the past and the present have shown that cultivating core values in people is important for a country's harmony and stability. Core socialist values transcend differences in ethnicity, language and geography as well as social status, profession and interests. There, an indispensable pillar of the Chinese dream. As China's overall national strength increases, technology advances, and people develop better competencies and a broader horizons. The people of China will have more confidence, self-reliance, freedom, self-discipline, and self-esteem. When such traits are translated into action, the Chinese civilization will achieve impressive progress. While China is moving closer toward the world, toward modernization, and toward the future, reform and innovation have become the themes of the Chinese spirit, echoing contemporary trends. In the past century, a national spirit filled by patriotism was passed down from generation to generation, pushing ahead the dream of a national rejuvenation. Over the past three decades, the spirit of the times, filled by reform and innovation, has been inspiring every Chinese person to forge ahead and chase their dreams. National prosperity is the basis of the well-being of the people. Only when the Chinese spirit is given the room to grow 
will people have more space to fill it with their dreams? So long as all Chinese people work together to build the Chinese dream, nothing is impossible. If you have dreams, you have direction. If your spirit is rooted in strong values, then your dreams will be realized. The Chinese spirit exerts a powerful influence on people fulfilling their dreams. With the help of the Chinese spirit, the great blueprint of the Chinese dream will become more beautiful and magnificent. Western scholars once considered Chinese civilization to be early maturing. Like its two great rivers, the Yangtze and the Yellow Rivers, this civilization is so time-honored and inclusive that it injects a special strength into the Chinese nation. No matter how great the disaster, setback, or change, the bond between the members of this nation binds them together the notion that everyone shares